Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kerry Kermud. At the weekend, I popped along to the Young Farmers Field Day at Orisdale. And with us being at Nokalo for the Royal Manx Show a couple of weeks ago, I got some memories from a wonderful museum and exhibition that's set up and I caught up with Alison Jones, one of the founders. Well, Kerry, with the uh, uh, busy schedule that the Young Farmers had at the Royal Manx shows and the Southern shows, always taking part of it, uh, they've been involved in more activities of late. They really have. They, they seem to never rest the Young Farmers these days. Uh, the field day has always been part of the calendar for as long as I can remember. And this year, a change of venue, they took themselves off to Orisdale in Balasala and uh, what an array of tasks and competitions they had. And I caught up with some of the ones taking part. Lauren Miller, you've obviously been helping here with the obstacle course. What an afternoon. This is absolute chaos we're seeing right now. Yeah, no, the kids have been really keen to get in, involved. Yeah, as you can see, the adults helping the kids and stuff. No, it's been a really good afternoon, and the assault course is definitely something that they've all been looking forward to. This assault, assault course is quite different from what we'd normally believe assault course to look like, though. Yeah, 100%. It's like from the northern area themed. Um, obviously, you've got the slide going into the, the water, the cargo net and stuff. And the, Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the seniors doing that. <laughs> Are you taking part? Um no. <laughs> <laughs> she says no now, but give it 10 minutes. <laughs> I have four spare clues with me. <laughs> <laughs> well prepared. Yeah. But it's great to see everyone enjoying themselves, Lauren. 100% and a nice turnout as well. Like There's not just seniors, there is a lot of juniors here as well, which are the future generation of young farmers. So It must be so difficult every year coming up with a new plan, new ideas, keeping it fresh and keeping them coming to young farmers. Yeah, and definitely, yeah. So, like, obviously we've had a lot of research into new activities and stuff, and it's proven to be a big hit with everyone. So hopefully next year will be even bigger and better. Steady Al, or Alan Radcliffe, the more professional name we should probably call you nowadays, as a steward. Yes, I've uh, had me here stewarding the log soaring today. Um, first time I've been at a... or most recent time I've been at a Young Farmers Field Day for probably 20 years but um <laughs> it's no, not been that long since you competed surely yeah it's been a while but um no there's uh, they've had a good day here today it's uh, lots of people here and uh, yeah it's been a, a really good effort at them it really is it's so great to see them having fun like you say the number of small children here even your son now he's learning the ropes i've seen him in the tug of war having a go yeah. but the atmosphere is just brilliant for them young people yeah there's um to be fair there's president of the northern this year and they keep asking me um what we were doing better back in the day and then um, <laughs> i tell them nothing really i think that uh, the young farmers is probably better now than it was 20 years ago there's more people involved they're keener and there's uh, sort of a bigger group of core members getting stuck in and uh, sort of helping sort things out really so um it's really nice to see it in such a healthy state. It really, really is. And we always say at every interview we've ever done, you know, you don't have to be a young farmer, an active young farmer, to be involved in this. No, no, no. There's, um, there's an awful lot of people from all walks of life uh, getting stuck in and uh, enjoying it, really. It's uh, lovely to see. Yeah, yeah. And you being the steward, you say the log saw. Now, the saw looked like something out of the Dark Ages. Yes, um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it is uh, a big, old-fashioned two-man log saw. So a few of them had a go with it, and uh, yeah, fair play to them. <laughs> Any edge on it? Uh, not a lot, by the look of things. <laughs> They've had a cracking day, and there's lots of laughter and lots of fun. So. And that, that is really what it's all about, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. Lots of people here enjoying themselves today. Nikki Kane, we've just seen a whole load of junior members absolutely dripping wet, soaking coming back into the yard. But they seem happy. Yeah, they seem to have a great time. They sort of got fully involved in everything, literally thrown themselves into it. Um, and just they've been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's been such a great day for them. It's everybody coming together. This is what the Federation of Young Farmers is about. It is. And it may, this is the part that makes it magical and just makes you sort of realise how, you know, how, how it's all, all worth it. And just, yeah, the little family that is Young Farmers. 
That is so true. And it's nice to see some of the older young farmers, like myself, and some of the mums and dads now coming back and supporting it too. Yes, and they were all came down and they were all stewards on, on the different events as well as our members. And it's great just, you know, offering anything that you need and it, like yourselves hosting as well. It's absolutely brilliant. You know, a lot of work goes in just, you know, getting it ready from turning it from farm use into, into us being able to use every, <laughs> everything and anything that we need at a drop of a hat. So it's been absolutely brilliant. And then the Southern Show have lent us things as well so it's it's been so good and that's what it's all about it is always that team effort between all of the agricultural sector but that said it's not always about agriculture is it today there was nothing really agricultural no no and it's sort of shown that that other side that you know anyone can get involved and join in and it, you know don't worry about being scared if you don't know that much about animals or anything they just come and come and get involved drive a quad round stack some bales <laughs> throw a welly or two <laughs> and and yeah and draw yourself portrait with your eyes closed so no it's really Brilliant. And who does come up with these wacky ideas? Oh, I don't know. I think, I think, thank goodness to the internet and I was all given. <laughs> but it's just a lot of them, you know, being passed down. You see some of these events that they were done and people say, I remember doing this when I when I came along. And um, no, it, it is, it's, it's fantastic. And, and this would be an annual event for the young farmers? Yes, yeah, we didn't have it last year. We took sort of a bit of a, a dip, in, dip in the event. So we thought we didn't have it last year. Had We had our 75th ball that actually, you know, took up a lot of time. Was, again, a fantastic, everything's a fantastic event fantastic event but it's, it's been great to see it come back with a boom and a great enthusiasm and everyone willing to get involved getting involved suggesting events coming up with the wonderful ideas and actually coming up on the day and today you've obviously been running around as a committee member of, of the federation you've got a great barbecue happening now it's been such great structure to the day you know it's a good team effort it is and so much goes you know goes in behind the scenes and there is each club each members they've sort of each club have had their own event to organize bring the stuff down put up and um, there's been federation events and brian and sophie you know in the background trying to sort out and get all points and and put all the, the sheets and the forms and speak to everyone and it, yeah it is it's it's just a great team as team much event. as it's been a fun day it seems quite competitive though oh my goodness it is definitely <laughs> i think adam's just come in and said something have won by quite a few points oh, and as you know no. you can just see the ones and ones that even if it's not their event they're taking part so they can get points for their club a bit like the tug of war you know taking part you get points for it. even if you don't do as well they still get points so everyone's giving it a go sewing all sorts log saw i have to confess i broke the log saw <laughs> don't think i will be asked to saw any logs in the i future. think a few people were quite grateful though it did look an absolute weapon <laughs> it was i was it's one of my, i remember going to northern area and it was my favorite event to have a go at doing it. i'd never done it before and did it then it was it was great fun but yeah maybe the, my career is now over <laughs> But let's hope that the, the cooking of the sausages and the bacon is a bit better because we've got a lot of hungry people here this afternoon now. Oh, we have, and I think yeah, my Uncle Kenny has been roped in. <laughs> I don't know whether he'll ever answer the phone to me again, but actually, <laughs> I couldn't, he couldn't say no, yes, say so, no, he's brilliant. And that's it, where everyone's family, friends, just they're just willing to, to, to get stuck into anything. Yeah. Cooking for 100, yes, they're all queuing up, <laughs> queuing up ready. And and Nick, our DJ there, he's DJing, but also I managed to blow blow the fuse of uh, the, the, um, the cable. <laughs> So it's really hard, but he's sorted us out. He's got his own, he's plugged it in, you know, so from DJs just helping us all, it's all sorts. Yeah. And, and that is the joyous thing about young farmers it is a small island we do pull together it's still competitive but it, like you say it's that family feel yes and it was lovely the tug of war say you know some of the teams are short and everyone everyone just hopped on the route to got involved i saw jim cayley giving some good <laughs> coaching there he'll be right andrew clegg will have him roped in on his uh, coaching team so yeah you know, it's just great to see people from you know getting willing to get involved yeah. they love their time so you know help yeah. willing to help out and loving coming back and joining in well, Bryony Neil, a long day done. All the activities outside are complete. Now we're taking a bit of time out for the evening session. Yes, we have just fired up the bar, so that's a good sign. But no, it's been a really, really good day. We've had a really good turnout. Um, I have been is stuck. I shouldn't say stuck because it's been really good, but stuck in the barn all day doing um, the domestic classes with Sophie. So we've been sorting them out. Um, we've had a lady of the manor, Mrs. Carol Kermode. She has kindly judged for us um, and what a job she's had today. Oh, we've done um, so many confectionery classes. So for example, like savory pastry, there's the Manx Bonnock class. Um, the males, there's a male class for chocolate cake. So wow. that was uh, highly, <laughs> highly entered. And then um, we had other classes such as a hedgerow posy and a normal floral posy. Then we've got six 
dance photography classes with different pictures and stuff such as like humorous or young farmers in action portrait and um, we had a craft class so yeah heaps heaps for it's her to loads. do and she did an amazing <laughs> job so yeah lots but that's the thing with young farmers, you don't have to be active, you don't have to be in the countryside, you can just come along, if you're yeah. good to bake or even if you're not clearly, if you're yeah. a disaster class, you know, it's something for everybody with young farmers. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even though our field day is aimed at young farmers because all the points from today go towards the end of year points at our AGM and um, we had open classes so anyone you know members of the public could enter and um, so we had a few people that we didn't recognize today putting classes in some of the cake classes the Victoria sandwich and the four decorated cupcakes they're always popular so um, yeah it was really good and yeah we're open to anyone coming along giving it a go and then hopefully reeling them in and signing them up to be members. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my uh, the most entertaining class for me today was seeing the young ones blindfolded doing a self-portrait I've yes. never even heard of it but wow yeah that is new that one thanks to our um, creative chairman Nikki Kane and um, so that was good and then we obviously had the seniors doing the peel and squeal so I don't know how <laughs> um, familiar people will be with that competition but um, we had so a female senior member sitting on a chair with a well it should be a male member lying over their lap and um, so the male member has to peel a potato and the female member sews a button onto the back of the male member's <laughs> buttocks so um yeah that was really good it's always entertaining to watch it is but two traditional sort of domestic yeah. uh, ideas going on there sewing who does sewing these days yeah exactly <laughs> but you know it's not to be uh at, is it it's a it's a good skill to have and they did very well so yeah but this is it that's what kind of pulls the clubs in different directions some could be really really strong in the sports side of yeah. it some could be stronger in the confectionery more domestic side yeah. so it is a real great balance between the whole lot to get the, the overall points I suppose. Yeah and it's really good we see a lot of junior members doing the like confectionery classes which is really good and then obviously we put on the male chocolate cake class to like really <laughs> like g them up and there is quite a good competition so that was probably one of the like you know biggest <laughs> classes um entry wise so yeah it's really good everyone just gives everything a go and everyone's super keen just to yeah. dig in and get involved and so. I suppose for you as secretary of the Federation of Young Farmers you know, it's a huge movement here on the Isle of Man yeah. it's something you must be working really hard at but very proud of at the same time oh uh, yeah like everyone here you know it's nice when we have new people come along but everyone here we all know and like you know them by name everyone's just a good laugh there's no like drama or anything like that it's just such a good group of people and something that I'm so like I am genuinely proud to be you know part of and have grown up with as well yeah. you know it's been part of my life for years now but so. that said Bryony you yourself aren't from a farm well, no, all my, my grandparents were both farmers, just my parents aren't farmers, but my partner's a farmer, luckily, so it's always sort of been intertwined in a way, um, and yeah, I just love it, and coming out, I, I managed to sneak out of the shed earlier to go and watch them do the obstacle race, and there was just like half-naked people freezing coming out of the uh, the bales that has been made into a swimming pool out of bales and silage wrap, so um, yeah, props to your brother for that one. <laughs> yeah, it's been really good, probably the best one we've had for a for a long time actually and obviously perfect location here at Orisdale thank you to you Kermode so um, yeah it's been ace and that's the thing we love giving back we enjoyed young farmers my parents yeah. enjoyed young yeah. farmers we enjoyed it and just to see it evolve and change over the years it's brilliant yeah. as much as we're more into the livestock side of it yeah. it's great to see the children coming through enjoying the sports and, and just getting stuck in generally it's just absolutely fab yeah. and what have you got coming up Brian just while we've got two seconds well we were only saying the other day we'll be deep into tractor run organizing soon which is a bit scary because well, I feel is. like we haven't had a proper summer yet so um, and then we've got Young Farmers Week coming up in October which we're just sort of talking about what we're going to do for that and um, there will be like a fun bingo night a sports night for the members so um, it's just getting the field day done everyone having a good time a few drinks and dancing tonight and then we'll get back into the September um, Federation meeting to plan everything else <laughs> all go all go all the time but yeah wouldn't have it any other way there we go, that was Nikki Kane and Bryony Neal from the Federation of Young Farmers and before them, Alan Radcliffe, a steward for the day. It was great catching up with Alan and reminiscing about the past and the amount of people who were there from young and old enjoying the day. It's always great to be involved with the young farmers. So do look out for their events on Facebook, social media channels and pop along if you have any interest, they'll welcome you with open arms, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you.
You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Radio with Kiri Kermud and myself, Simon Clark. Well, as I said in the intro to the programme, Nokalo Farm has been the scene over recent years of the Royal Manx Agricultural Society showground. Well, it's got many, many memories, many of them uh, stemming back to the war times in the 1900s. And I caught up with Alison Jones and her husband, who run the museum and the exhibition centre in the old schoolhouse at Patrick. I'm so surprised when I walked in the door of this museum that you got here. It's incredible. Oh, thank you very much. Well, it's, I mean, we've been open, we opened the year before COVID struck. And um, so 2019, which was 100 years from when the internees were repatriated from the camp. And um, we just, we couldn't believe just how many people have been to see us since obviously shut for COVID. But then um, this last year has been amazing. Yeah, but you've got, uh, we're, we're standing in this room with the first place really that you were guided to and it's a, a massive plan of how the Knock Halo uh, internment camp looked back then because we all come to the show field a lot of people will know it there's a few buildings to the farm and just fields when you look at this it's vast it's absolutely huge I mean it is 695 miles of barbed wire involved in this camp and um, 23,000 people in um, compounds that held just over a thousand people and plus their guards as well so at its peak there was around about twenty five thousand people actually living here at Nakalo. So the internment camp obviously um, we weren't war here on the Isle of Man but just tell us a little bit about it, it was it stemmed back to the World War One didn't it? Absolutely so essentially this was all to do with the um, Aliens Restrictions Act. So that had been something that had been drafted by the British government. And it was about the fact that um, they could segregate and in turn anybody who was living in Britain that, or, or that was a civilian effectively that um, they felt was a risk to the population in Britain. Was, was that sort of friends of, of the German Empire and things like that? Was that how it was deemed? It was anybody who was born in a country that Britain was at war with. So if you were born in a country Britain was at war with, you became an enemy alien. And um, so as war broke out, you'd got, there were certain people that the police had identified as potential spies, but you've also got people on merchant ships, say in the British port, so German seamen who were on board the ships. Or you might have um, students, um, German-born students who were at the universities in Britain or perhaps on holiday. And so initially, internment was really about those people who were kind of in Britain, but were born in Germany and were of military age. So it was about segregating them. But to be honest, Nikalo really came into the picture um, a little bit later on when they started actually interning um, the reservists. So this was people living in Britain um, who'd got done their military experience, they'd done mil military training um, in Germany um, before they'd actually moved to Britain. And they'd perhaps not been here for quite as long. And then when it reached its peak after the sinking of the Lusitania in May 1915, and at that point, after huge rioting um, across Britain and its empire, the decision was taken to intern anybody who was an enemy alien, um, any male, um, between the ages of 17 and 55. And that was the point when the Kayla was expanded to the size that you see in front of you on the model here. But of course, when you look at the, the thousands of, of, of men that were, were interned here, I mean, there were some fairly, fairly big names come out of it for future years. Pilates, what's that? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So probably, probably our most famous internee. Yeah. Um, he was actually interned here. He'd been um, living in Blackpool. He was actually involved in a circus in Blackpool. He'd been interned quite early on. Um, he came to the camp in the September of 1915, was interned um, in a compound um, in Camp 4, and um, he actually talks later on in life, so in a Sports Illustrated article later on in life, he talks about how um, he developed some of his methodology, um, some of that which was he was working on really in the camp, and he was inspired by our very own Manx cats, and he'd look at how there, you know, because obviously the, as the war progressed, the um, submarine blockades were kicking in, food rationing was um, getting uh, worse, um, the internees were on rations, the cats 
that were part of the camp, they were being looked after by the internees, they were also getting skinnier. But when he watched these cats, he was looking at their movements, their stretching. So anybody today who's doing Pilates and doing cat stretches, you know, it uh, harks back to, or he talked about how it harks back to these cats, mm, uh, these Manx cats at, at Michaelo. It's incredible, isn't it? To be honest, keeping occupied was absolutely critical. It was critical from a mental health perspective. Um, it also, if they were occupied and um, working, they could actually send money, they could buy items in the camp canteen, such as letter writing paper or cigarettes or whatever, but they could also send money home. So it's a really critical thing to do. Yeah. In the camp, there were, I mean, there was such a broad range of people, really talented people, and including within that are some, some really incredibly skilled cabinet makers. So when um, a gentleman called Bassett Locke who was um, a model, he had a, um, his company was involved in models um, based in Northampton. When he was looking for um, some furniture for his house that was being designed, he, he actually used a designer called um, Charles Rennie Macintosh. Charles Rennie Macintosh, looking for the finest of cabinet makers who weren't actually fighting in a war, actually looked um, via the Quakers, came to Nakalo, and it was the cabinet makers here in Nakalo, really top cabinet makers, that ended up making this furniture here to um, Charles Rennie Macintosh Designs, which is quite incredible. How long did the huts and the camps stay uh, on the grounds? Were they ever used for anything else? Oh, I mean, we've got some fantastic auction catalogues of the time, so everything was being sold off to the, as much as it possibly could. The huts were um, sold off where they could be. Um, we've got huts that are, you know, there's a few huts in Patrick, which actually you look at bungalows with little low roofs and you can see that underneath there is an Akalo hut. And then underneath those huts, you've got all the foundations of the camp and um, the, the brick um, pillars that the huts were on and the, the latrines, that were, the concrete and all of that was then broken up and where, if you look at the 100 year old photograph of the Caledonia engine where going up the driveway, there's no wall along the side of that camp today. There is a wall, looks like a beautiful Manx stone wall but it's actually made up of bricks, of concrete, of um, bits of, of all sorts of um, rubble, effectively, which was Nakalo Camp. So Nakalo Camp, in a sense, still exists. It's all in the walls of Nakalo. The wonderful museum and exhibitions that you've got here, uh, when can people come and see it? Every week we're open from Wednesday um, through to Saturday, 10am to 5pm, throughout the summer period. So we open basically for the start of April and we close at the end of September. One final thing was, I forget to mention before, uh, the, the tree. So a few years ago, one of our volunteers, actually, Lindsay, got in contact with us and um, about a, a, little, a little oak tree that had been, um, it was a seedling, and it had been grown from an acorn collected um, from Auschwitz. We, obviously, we still have our um, internee graves from the camp, not the Christian graves, but we have the Jewish and the Turkish graves. You know, there's a lot of links between, you know, a lot of the Jewish internees at the Kalo camp, they were repatriated back to Germany. Many of those actually ended up then experiencing Nazi Germany. She contacted us thinking, well, actually, this will be a good place to have one of these little seedlings. So we, this year, um, had a special ceremony here to celebrate the fact that our little Auschwitz oak that has been planted here in the graveyard next to our Jewish graves and formally mark it with a plaque to tell its story of where it came from so that we don't ever forget what actually happened during those war years. Alison Jones uh, tell me all about the old camp at Nokalo Farm during World War One. It's hard to believe when you look at those green fields what was there once upon a time and to hear that they're still part of the walls that make the Nokalo Lane. It's just unbelievable what went on. Get in there. It's uh, an excellent uh, little exhibition and uh, everything there that you need to know. If you need to know anything, just ask them. That's it for Countryside. If you've missed any of the bits or need to hear any of the programmes again, you can go down to Manx Radio's website, powered by Miller Chaps or Ramsey. You can download the podcasts or the Listen Again features. And if you've got anything for Countryside, let us know. Drop an email to countryside at manxradio.com. That's it for this week, though. We're back with more on next week's programme. So until then, from me, Simon Clark. And me, Gary Kermode. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.